action. Hi, so today we're planting some tulip bulbs. Time to plant is any time from mid-October in the UK through to Jan as late as January you can often get away with it. Uh, the best time to plant is in November and that's all to do with prevention of uh, tulip fire which is a fungal disease. Fairly simple to plant but a few things that are important to know. Uh, most important thing, plant pointy end up, that's where the leaf comes out. Uh, the other thing is try to plant them uh, three times their depth down. So the average uh, depth of a tulip bulb there, that's about two inches, that's five centimetres is what I'm dealing with. So I want to plant them then 15 centimetres deep. So you can imagine one, two, three, 15 centimetres deep or six inches. Okay. Uh, you'll see in a lot of guides, uh, tw uh, 20 centimetres deep. <laughs> of course, that's absolutely fine. Uh, that will allow for a slightly bigger bulb. So all we're going to do now is put them into a pot. It's the same guidelines for a pot as it is for the ground. When would I expect to see these flower? Well, if they were an early tulip variety, then I'd expect to see them from about late March onwards, March, April. If they were a mid-season one, then I'd expect to see them in April, May. And if they're a late, I'd expect to see them flowering in May. So spacing, if I was planting these in the ground, I would normally be looking to plant them essentially a bulb width apart. So you measure your one there, it's usually about sort of two, two inches, five centimetres. So you, you measure another two inches, five centimetres, and you can put your next bulb in. So that's how I would normally do it. Uh, in a pot, you can often get away with uh, putting them a little bit closer together, which I'm going to do. Uh, particularly, uh, this is good guidance if you're growing in a pot and it's not a species tulip. So it's a tulip really that you're growing for just one spring uh, flowering and then you're probably then taking them out of that pot and planting them on, on elsewhere or you might try your luck, luck and replant them. So normal garden variety tulips normally you'll only get one good flowering out of them in the first year uh, and then after that there's sort of a bit here to miss. With species they tend to clump more, they tend to expand more and repeat flower uh, over a number of years. So um, yeah, that's why I would tend to go in pots for non-species varieties, the ones which are a bit showy, your garden varieties, and plant them a little bit closer than that two inches, five centimeters together, uh, because I'm, I'm looking to get the best, best show in that pot I can before I then take them out and then I will plant them in a border or somewhere like that where doesn't matter if they do bloom or not. On the pots that I'm going to plant into, don't forget it's the, it's the same depth in the ground as it would be for a pot. I've actually marked with a little cross there where I'm going to have my end compost level, my soil level, and then lower down I've marked roughly where I want my bulb to be. So no higher, uh, the middle of the bulb shouldn't be any higher than that. In this pot, I've just made sure I've got lots of holes. Drainage is very important for bulbs. And then I've covered over the holes to stop them clogging with compost. So I don't want them to clog up with compost. So I'm putting these bits of broken pot over them. You could put a small amount of grit in or some wash stones, something like that. But don't go overboard. It doesn't need a layer of drainage. In fact, there is some evidence to suggest that if you put too much stuff in there like grit that you create a bit of a sump, a bit of a, a water reservoir, which is not what you want. If you're gonna use grit with bulbs, you put a very small amount uh, directly underneath the roots. And that's normally when you're planting in borders that might get a bit wet, or you're mixing the grit in with your compost. The compost I'm using is just a peat-free, multi-purpose compost that is a little bit woody, a little bit fibrous, okay? And I've made this 
uh, damp all the way through so I don't have to worry about watering it. I'm just gonna pour that in now. I'll fill this up. Um, you could use bowl fiber, which is actually brilliant, um, but what you're finding is uh, if you're doing a large amount uh, in, of pots, then bulb fibre isn't terribly economical. It's nice if you're doing a few small pots, it's a nice way to spoil the bulbs. Um, but what I would say is just go for a fibrous, multi-purpose, pink-free compost if you can. That'll be absolutely fine for tulips. In the ground, you're just obviously relying on the soil. And like I said, you can use a bit of grit at the bottom of the hole if you're worried that they'll be sitting on damp soil. Now the difference between planting tulips in pots and planting tulips in a border is that you're normally building up, not digging down. Uh, in a border, normally what you're doing is actually digging six inches deep. So really the length of this trowel, and then you're popping your bulb in. Or you could use a bulb planter, which is just a round device. You pop in, it takes a core of soil out, and then you put your bulb in and then you knock that core of soil back on top and maybe just firm it down with your foot gently. Um, be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not actually a big fan of um, bulb planters. They only work on certain sorts of soil. So if you've got the sort of soil that works on, great, use a bulb planter. If you haven't, then use a trowel, a trowel on a long handle or a spade. I've planted thousands of tulip bulbs with just a just a good dig sharp digging spade digging down six inches dropping the bulb in so not even placing it and dropping it in and then just covering back up with my heel because if you're planting thousands of tulips on an estate you haven't really got the uh, economy of time to make sure they're perfectly pointing up and everything like that so we're planting in a pot anyway so we're going to build up our soil level to that mark i made where it's uh, about six inches deep Now I've filled up to my level where I have my little cross. You see, I've filled this compost level just up to there. And I firm down with my hand just gently. I don't want to compact it. And you can also do that just to get it to where you want it. Quick health and safety note. Uh, what you might find is that you, if you're doing a large pot, you want to actually do this exercise exactly where the pot is going to stay because you've got to lift it out afterwards. But in order to film this correctly for you, I've had to do it on the potting bench here. So now all I'm going to do is pop them on top of the compost. If you had a dry compost, you could gently twist them a bit like a screw bulb. And as you can see, I'm planting a lot closer than the normal depth would be. So for instance, a normal one would be if I was looking to plant next to this bulb, I'd be going right a bulb there. So that would be my ground spacing between those two. But because I'm looking to get the best show possible, I'm really filling it. So I'm just making sure there's just a bit of space between each bulb. Okay. Just don't forget, these are only gonna be in here for a year before. Taken out and planted again. That's a questionable bulb. I might pop that into uh, a different container, which isn't as important. It's looking a bit ropey been stored for too long like that. Got nothing back here. These are actually end of season tulips. Um, I got these, I ordered these in December and I'm planting them in January, which is very late. Uh, but it's because I got a good price on them and I wanted to show that you could plant them in December, but they came New Year's Eve, so I'm showing you how to plant them in January. So I've placed all my bulbs firmly into the level there, and yes, I've got it about right because the middle of my 
little cross mark is about the middle of the bulb, so perfect. Now all I'm going to do is fill the compost level up to this little cross here. I'm just doing this gently, especially at first, just to make sure I don't tip over the bulbs. As I'm filling my compost level, after I've got a good inch or so above my bulbs, I'm very gently pressing down as I level out, extremely gently, just really, almost just, just barely making contact because I don't want to damage the tips of the bulbs. I want them to be in contact with the soil. So here's something that I've done when I've got a few inches to where I want my top compost level to be. I've put this sort of wire mesh down. What would be better is maybe something like a chicken mesh, which is a bit smaller, so smaller holes. But what I've done is I've sort of doubled it up reason I'm doing this is uh, we have a very friendly squirrel or two and uh, they like digging up the bulbs and all sorts so I'm putting this in here to stop any squirrels or rodents that, that might happen upon them and dig up these bulbs. Now that I've put my mesh in I've put another inch worth of compost on top and I'm just going to plant some pansies. So they're going to go in really nicely. Just some winter pansies. Just how I feel they're going to look best. Bit of talk about the tulips underneath. They will force their way through these pansies fine. In fact, I have seen before a tulip push a pansy up like that with still its root block, uh, so that it's sort of floating in the air. So I can always manoeuvre them a bit if they are getting in the way or I can rip them out totally but what I don't want is just bare compost for months until these tulips come up so this is a nice easy item to plant in what I wouldn't do is plant anything bulky like my sort of thriller filler spiller style pots where you've got a big specimen plant and then some medium sized plants and then some lower spilling plants it's it's too much for them to fight their way through and um, I'm just looking to fill the space and be generous with your plants although these will fill remember this is winter so they're not going to fill up the space too quickly all I need to do now is just fill in the gaps in between these with compost and the height will be just below the lip of this pot so it's perfect the other advantage of having something like these pansies as well as just a bit of interest in your pots during the winter is that they're going to create an extra barrier for burrowing rodents and squirrels to sort of get in there, get to the bulbs, even though I put my mesh in. And also they're going to stop the cats leaving me little presents on there. So I have two main problems, squirrels and cats. And uh, so this is my sort of cat prevention they see bare soil, they're just going to leave me a little present. So, um, yeah, that looks a lot better than a, than a cat poo. So that's it done and good timing too because it's starting to get dark and also the rain's coming down. So I'm just going to label these so that I can remember in the spring what they are because there may be a good chance in May that I can't remember what mix of tulips I've planted and what mix of pansies I've got here. So I've put on this label here, someone gave me these labels ages ago, so I'll just keep reusing them. And I put tulip Darwin mix. So it's Darwin mix is the type of tulip. And the pansy is lavender shades. So different shades of purple there, lavender shades. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil it by sticking a big label, plastic label in the middle there and look a bit nasty. All I'm going to do is subtly put it somewhere like that just so that if I can't remember what they are and someone asks me I can go checking around the rim and fish out the label and go oh yes of course that was the uh, Darwin mix and the lavender shades so there we go. So aftercare wise all I need to do is 
just pick over any blooms that are broken or faded. So this one has actually got a snap stem, so I'm gonna show you. You can just go down to the base there and use your fingernails to pinch it. If your fingernails don't work, you can always just use some snips or scissors and just cut it down to the base without cutting any other material. Nice clean cut and then take that away. That can just go on the compost. Uh, if it was a good looking bloom, what I would do is I would actually cut that again there and I'd throw that on a salad because they're edible. Uh, the other, only other thing of maintenance with it, so I'm not going to get into feeding because this is brand new compost, is just making sure that the compost stays moist but not, you don't want it to be wet all the time. So you can allow it to dry out and I use a moisture meter. This is telling me that it is wet at the moment. All it is is, is a pH meter so it can tell me my soil pH there but if I flip it that way it will tell me how moist it is and it's wet. What you want to do is allow it to dry out a little but not totally so keep keep it moist. Cut. 